Over recent years, there's been a lot of interest in the idea of flexibility of employment. Cranfield's been doing some research in this area, and we're fortunate that Dr. Claire Kelleher, who's heading up this research, is going to answer a few questions. Now, Claire, let's start off with what did you look at and what was coming out of the research? Okay. Um, in the research, we were interested really to look at the impact of flexible working on employee performance. And we defined employee performance in quite a broad way. Um, so we were looking at a number of measures of employee performance to see whether or not when people change their working arrangements, whether or not it impacted positively or negatively on their in performance at work. Right, because that's one of the concerns that many employers have. If they, if they grant greater flexibility, productivity will, will go down the plug hole. Well, in fact, our research showed some very positive effects on employee performance. We looked at both what we called the direct effect on performance, on the quantity of work they delivered, the quality of work, but also on indirect factors like employee stress levels and their level of commitment to the organisation, which have been shown by other research work to impact on um, employee performance. And perhaps contrary to some uh, common opinion, we actually found the the uh, change in working arrangements frequently had a positive impact on the quantity and quality of work people delivered. So, I mean, it sounds great news, really, the employee benefits and the employer. Um, I think there certainly is the potential for a win-win situation for employees to have greater choice over their working arrangements and for the employer to benefit in terms of improved performance. Having said that, I think I would say from our research that we found that these benefits, while potentially there, are not necessarily realised just by developing a policy on flexible working. So what do you need to do then to ensure that flexibility of employment actually works in practice? Well, a number of factors. Um, I think, first of all, there are issues around providing support for flexible workers themselves. If people change their working arrangements to provide support to help them to adjust to working in different ways, but not only for flexible workers, um, also for managers of flexible workers who perhaps need to manage people in different ways, but also people, co-workers, people who work with flexible workers, learning how to work with people who may be present um, at different times or less frequently in the workplace than perhaps those under um, formal, uh, normal working arrangements. Now, one of the concerns that, that people have is that there'll be people sitting at home doing nothing. Has that worked out in practice? Is that, is that what actually happens? I think in most cases we found that actually people who work remotely from home often um, tend to work longer hours and often are more productive in an environment where there are less distractions frequently um, than in the workplace. But I think one of the issues that that, has, that raises is that there's a need to think about other HR policies and to reflect on whether or not existing HR policies are appropriate for employees who aren't in the workplace working normal times under a normal working arrangement. So what do you mean by that? Well, for example, um, many policies related to employee performance take in criteria of things like visibility and people's um, networking in an organisation. Um, people who spend less time in the workplace almost by definition have less opportunity to be visible and it may be that one needs to reflect on policies so that their performance driven rather than perhaps these other criteria which are sometimes taken into account. So if you were to set out some do's and don'ts, what would they be? Well, I think perhaps sort of recognising what benefits can be, can be gained from flexible working and thinking about how that can be facilitated. Um, we've certainly found providing um, support for employees, but also thinking in a creative way about how work may be organised differently. Um, certainly in some of the organisations we worked with, we found that there were established ideas of what could and could not be done according to different working arrangements but when people started to think creatively then often work could be done in different ways even though traditionally it hadn't been done in that kind of a way. So I think there's a lot to be said for thinking outside the box in this context. Can you give me any examples where employers once they started to think about this 
did think creatively and it was successful. Yes, I mean, I think, you know, very often if people work together in a team, there's often a view that the team has to be sitting in a room together. Um, but as long as technology facilitates good communication within the team, I think, you know, there are other ways for teams to communicate. And indeed, in those companies that perhaps had virtual teams because their other team members might have been in other countries working in different time zones, they were often able to adapt some of those practices to working in a domestic situation where flexible workers were involved. Now I know that uh, you're about to embark on the second round of research in this area. What are you hoping to explore here? Well, during the um, recession, a number, of a number of companies have taken a slightly different take on flexible working, particularly asking employees perhaps to consider reducing their hours in order to reduce costs um, during the recessionary period. What we want to look at now is really how organisations may be able to bring together their needs for flexibility with employees' needs for flexibility. So whereas in the past it's tended to be about employee choice, we're now focusing focusing on looking at matching employer and employee needs. So the old stereotypes of a, of a rigid, fixed nine to five environment in a workplace seem to be disappearing. I think that's very true. I think that the you know, so-called typical work environment is often not typical now, where you have people working according to different patterns, different locations and at different times. Thank you very much. Thank you.